Well, hey everybody. I thought what I'd do today is show you some of the steps you can do to make your own beekeeping equipment. Um, what we'll build today is called an escape board. It's used to get the bees out of your honey boxes. Um, you come in the day before you want to get the honey, put this escape board on. Uh, as they go throughout their normal bee day, they go down below the escape board and can't typically get back up very easy. Um, before we do that, a lot of the plans that I found over the years um, that were very simple were, came from two places. Um, this Build Your Own Beekeeping Equipment by Tony Pisano. Uh, this book was, I don't know, like $25, but it saved me hundreds of dollars over the years. Um, showing you simple ways with simple tools. Uh, you don't have to have a new Yankee workshop at your house to build beekeeping equipment. So um, I got a hold of some old uh, recycled pieces and what I'll start doing is breaking those down and showing you step by step how to build your own 10 frame escape board. So what I've got here is a piece of plywood. Uh, it's 3 8 inch plywood and it's 48 by 64. So I thought I'd show you a tip I figured out the other, well, some time ago. Um, if your kids have colored mar um, pencils and you use the red, it shows up much better. Uh, not a lot of good lighting down here in the weird shot, but um, what we'll do is we'll mark out the pieces. This uh, 3 8 inch plywood wants to be 15 and 7 16 by 19 and 1 16th. Um, don't stress too much over the 16th. Um, if it's a 16th off, uh, the bees won't mind. So what we're going to do out of this one, I think I figured it out. I can get nine or so pieces uh, of these identical pieces out of this piece of plywood. So I will cut the uh, plywood into smaller pieces using the, the handsaw. All right, we have the nine pieces cut out of the bigger piece. I ended up using the table saw once I had them um, broken down into thirds. Um, just easier for me. Um, once they're small enough, you can handle um, table saw is an easier way for me than the uh, circular saw. I said handsaw earlier. Don't don't think I was down here with a Popeye style handsaw I'm trying to handsaw it. Anyway, next step is uh, you've got to find the center of the <clears throat> of the board so you can drill a, a or cut a hole. So get it close. Uh, again, you're I'm making bee stuff, not fine furniture. But what I'll do is I'll just go corner to corner with my straight edge. And honestly, you don't need to go draw corner to corner. Your hole is going to be two and a half inch diameter. So what you end up with is that X marks the spot. So what I'll do is I'll take something that's pretty close to a two and a half inch diameter. And I'll, I'll draw the uh, draw the circle for the hole that we'll need. Well, would you look at that? I have an eight ounce jelly jar that was destined to be a candle. I ran out of beeswax or thyme before I made the candles, but uh, this is the rim of it is just over two and a half, so problem solved. There's your circle template. Don't mind the wick. I'll push that out of the way. All right. So what I did was I drilled a hole inside the, the marked circle. I'll take a jigsaw with a fine tooth blade and I'll cut, I'll probably leave the red line um, because I want it to be around two and a half. Um, no sense in taking outside the line. We don't need it to be that big. So that's the next step. What you'll do next is you cut the sides and the ends of the, of the frame that, that sits around the plywood. So. Step one is rip uh, pieces down to inch and a half. Um, I've got some some odd pieces here, um, roughly long enough. But what I'll do to make sure I have everything the same is I'll actually cut these pieces to length, which is 16 and a quarter and 19 and one eighth. Uh, I will cut those down on the chop saw. Um, if you don't have one, you can use a, a handheld saw, but uh, for me, it's just as easy. Instead of taking a bunch of inch and a half wide pieces over to the 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 uh, chop saw and trying to get them all the same length, you cut all of the stuff down at once, and then when you rip them through, 
cutting the inch and a half wide pieces. All of them are already the same length. All right, what I've got done now is I've <coughs> ripped enough of these uh, inch and a half wide pieces, and then I set up the stack dado blade um, just to skosh over 3 8 so I've got um, a main chipper and then the each side and then I had I put two little micro shims in there um, to make it fit snug but not tight on the plywood what you'll do is you'll rip a, a groove down and that will accept the plywood and then after that you'll on the short sides you'll rip a three-quarter inch it's three-eighths deep three-eighths wide three-eighths from the edge so this will be the top of the board it doesn't matter um, but if you find a cracker there or something, you might want to put that on the inside. Um, that way it doesn't get exposed to the weather. So if you don't have a dado blade on your table saw, you can use a regular blade. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. Um, the important thing is that you have wide enough to accept the plywood, deep enough. Um, it doesn't hurt to go a little deep. You don't want to go too deep. You'll lose all the structural. You, you've only got 3 eighths inch here. But the plywood would fill it. But if you're too deep and you have a gap, you might have a little structural issue, but no real big deal. Uh, one thing I didn't point out at the beginning, um, maybe I did. When you're making beehive equipment, the work is in the setup. So once you have the blade set or the fence set or whatever you have set, you might as well make as many as you have wood to make. Um, because it's just bang, 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 um, cutting the pieces out. So I've got enough short sides to make, um, short and long sides to make nine bee escapes. I'm only gonna show you one at a time, obviously. I'm not gonna make nine in a row in front of you. That'd be boring. But it's, a, it's that, like that with a, all your beehive equipment. If you're making bottoms or boxes or tops or lids or anything, um, once you've got the saw set up right, then it's, it's just a matter of cranking through until you're out of wood. So something to think about, but uh, I'm gonna put all these through, get the groove, and I'll come back and show you the, the the dados on the ends of the short pieces. Okay, so we've got all the grooves, the three inch by three inch, three eighths off the edge grooves cut. Um, next thing we need to do is set the blade to cut rabbits down the, the each side of each short piece. So a couple things there. Um, something I did years ago because I always <clears throat> spend a lot of time measuring. So here I have a 3 8 inch deep by 3 quarter inch wide cut out in a piece of plywood and it's labeled. And then on the other one, other side, I have a 5 8 inch wide by 3 8 inch deep um, cut out. So what that lets you do is slide the table here. I'll see if I can an angle. Maybe I can. Push stick, I'd recommend it. All right, so what that lets you do is if I want to be 3 8 deep, I already know I'm 3 8 deep, but if I want to be 3 8 3 quarter wide, I just put this on, bring the fence to it, lock the fence down, run a piece of scrap through to make sure just you have to test it, but um, saves you a lot of time measuring, and that way you can get back on the cut faster. So I'll cut these rabbits on the short pieces and come back when it's time to do the next step. Okay, so once you get everything rabbited and cut out, this is what you'll end up with. Uh, see, this is the 3 8 side on the top. You know, this round hole, of course, and then down here, this, this gap is almost three quarter. Now that makes sense. Three eighths, three eighths, and three quarters, inch and a half. So it's about a three quarter inch gap. This will actually be the bottom side of the of the piece. Um, what I do for the corners is I'll put some glue on this face, and I'll take a one inch or seven eighths inch staple, and I'll put one over on the bottom side, one on the bottom side, one on the top side. 
The staples are only there really to hold it until the glue dries. Um, I do not glue the plywood into the grooves. It just floats. Um, and then here's a tip to square it up. I'll try to make sure you can see what I've got going on. So if you want to square up something, real simple and easy, no measurements, no tape measures. You take it flush with the front edge of your table, flush with the side edge of your table, and it's square. Because you know your table's square. So instead of measuring and fighting and fiddling, use the edge of your table saw, and as you glue it and staple it on the corners, you know you're already square. Okay, we've got all the cases assembled, and they're set off to the side. What we've got to do now is to cut these pieces. They are three quarter inch wide by 17, 7 16 thick. So what I do for that is I have this old uh, six and a half or seven and a quarter inch uh, plywood cutting blade, and quite a while ago I made this zero clearance insert because if you would try to cut this with a standard blade with your standard standard clearance you would just you would be dangerous because your your board would want to tuck in underneath between the fence and the blade it would make it snarly and, and snarly so uh, what this lets you do with a zero clearance in this this smaller saw blade is uh if you can see as it would travel out the end of the cut it can't get down in and fall in and get jammed and throw back and get hurt so uh we have quite a bit of these to cut because um each escape board wants 36 50 57 almost five feet of these uh Three quarter by seven sixteens um, strips. So we have a lot of cut and do. So let's get after it. So once you have your your uh, pieces cut seven sixteens by three quarters, it wants you to cut a thirty degree angle um, on each end. And the miter saw will go to thirty degrees, but that's that's thirty degrees this way. And that actually ends up being a, a 60 degree on on that if you use the fence. So there's this opening in the fence because the it's it's a um, compound miter, so the the saw can tilt as well as um, bevel. So what I put together is this real quick jig. It's got a what ends up being a zero clearance fence. It's got a holder. And that lets you go to 30 degrees. Um, if you <clears throat> if you just freehanded it, you would have to guess if you were square to the fence. And then it could also pull it in um, into the back of this channel here. So nothing fancy, but lets you make that cut. Uh, the fence got off a little bit. Uh, lets you make that cut, keeps your hands out of the way. And... Uh, quick and easy so that's a way to, to make that cut if you can't do that um, you could do it on the table saw if you marked every end with your with your ruler you marked every end you could make that cut on table saw or, or with the circular saw but anyhow that's how I chose to make that 30 degree cut on the um, pieces we'll call the maze Well now for the fun part. You've got your angles cut, um, you've got your, your case assembled. Um, what I've done here is I've glued one side of each of the triangles that'll be assembled. These are just extra pieces, 7 16 inch spacers. Uh, what I'll do is I'll flip them over into their spot. And then we'll get ready to use 3 quarter inch bread nails to secure them just until the glue dries. Um, if you don't have a three-quarter inch bread nail, that's fine. 
you use whatever you got. Um, if you need to use a longer nail and you end up driving through the plywood, once you flip it back over, just peen that nail end over. Um, like I said, the, the brads are just there to hold the pieces until the glue sets. So what we'll do now is just put a brad or two in each piece, keeping the spacing correct. Because if you get too wide, the bees will find their way back in. The whole idea is not to let the bees find their way back in. And so when I go to secure it, the last thing I do is make sure I squeeze it up against the spacer. And if you have a little bit of glue squeeze out, no big deal, just wipe it up and the bees will not mind. What my buddy Eli told me one time, he said, if these bees ever complain about anything you ever build for them, throw them out. So now you have your, your, your uh, escape tunnel. What it is, this is actually the bottom when it's on the hive but they'll come down through this hole. We'll put some wire mesh over here. And they get naturally funneled out one of the three entrances or exits in this case. Because they're fairly narrow, they don't necessarily come back in. Never say never. Um, bees don't read books. So, but once they come down and they come out, the super uh, is above them. This, this, it's a little bit weird to explain it upside down, but they'll come down, they'll hit this wire mesh, they'll, they'll go into the box that's below it, and that's why you only leave this on there about a day, because if you leave it on there much longer, um, they'll, they might find their way back in. It's also why you don't want to be too, too wide at your entrances, so we use that 7 16 inch spacer. So, next step is we'll cut some number 8 hardware claw and, and cut to fit, and then we'll attach that and then we'll be done. All right, so I have the uh, piece of hard, number eight hardware claw. What number eight means is there are eight holes to the inch. So if you hear number two hardware claw, you know that the holes are gonna be a half inch and uh, big enough that bees can get through, so that would be a, a worthless piece of material for this. So this uh, number eight, eight holes to the inch, and it's cut out in the rough shape of this triangle. We're gonna fix it to the to the uh, maze frames using half inch staples. Again, if you don't have half inch staples, use what you got. Um, uh, a staple gun, you know, with the regular squeeze type stapler would work, but uh, since I got this, I'm gonna use it, so. You do want to fix it to the outer and the inner triangle. Okay, there it is. Uh, this would be the part that uh, you would put your honey super onto that you want to remove honey from the following day. and. The bees would clamber down through this, this two and a half inch opening. They'd hit this hardware cloth and it, it would be naturally directed out to one of the three exits. There would be a, a box below that they could go into. Um, and then you'd come back the next day and, and hopefully you would find a, a super full of honey with very few bees that you have to encourage to go back in. So I uh, hope that this showed you that you don't have to have a workshop full of tools. Um, I've been pretty fortunate that I do have a few tools, but um, don't let not having the table saw or the miter saw or, or any air nailers stop you. Um, start where you're at with what you got. Um, maybe you got a buddy like uh, me. 
that would help you build these if you ask them to. Um, also, if you don't sweat it. If you don't have a dado to cut these rabbits, um, the bees won't care if you put a flush joint on there. Um, but anyway, long story short, do the best you can, do what you can, where you can, when you can, and uh, I hope you found this information useful.